Okay, so in this video, we will introduce the idea of a U substitution. Now, the idea is very simple. Given an integral, we sometimes are able to make a substitution, a change of variables, to transform the original integral into one that is simpler. We'll see as we go through different examples that there are a lot of subtleties in the types of U substitutions that we can perform, but we can at least look at the general idea the general setup where a U substitution could be applied, and then we'll consider exceptional uh, cases. Suppose you have an integral as a function of x that looks like this. So you have f of g of x, so composition, so the whole expression is a function, f of the other function g of x, and the whole thing is multiplied by g prime of x dx. This is the generic setup, and the idea when you make a substitution, so you want to transform the old variable x in terms of the new variable u, usually the rule of thumb is you're looking for a function, here g of x, whose derivative, g prime of x, is multiplying the expression. So if you find a function g of x, whose derivative multiplies the expression, this will become your u. So we let here, our new variable u be equal to simply g of x. And that's a general rule of thumb when making a u substitution. We let u be the function and the integrand whose derivative is multiplying the expression. Well, let's see how this integral as a function of x will be transformed now as a function of u. Let's replace one thing at a time. Well, if you look here, we have f of g of x, but we are letting g of x be equal to u. So this will now be simply g of x equals u. So all we have is now f of u. g of x is replaced by u. And now we're left with, well, what about g prime of x dx? Well, think about it. u is a function of x. So we can find its derivative, so we can differentiate u with respect to x, so du over dx. This will equal g prime of x. We are finding the derivative of our function with respect to x. So we can multiply across by dx, and now you're going to have that du is g prime of x times dx. And that is the missing part of our integrand, right? g prime of x dx as a function of u is simply du. And now we have our change of variables. So you see, the new integral seems simpler than the original one. We had the integral of f of g of x times g prime of x dx. Once we make this substitution, this change of variables, the integral becomes quite simply the integral of f of u du. And hopefully, this should be simpler. And that is the idea of a u substitution. Of course, once you solve the new integral, in the end you'll have an answer as a function of u. In the end, since the original integral is a function of x, you'll want to replace u back by its original function of x to give a final answer as a function of x. Now that is the idea of a u substitution for an indefinite integral. Let's see how this works the same for a definite integral, except there is one additional twist. So suppose we consider now not just the integral of f of g of x, g prime of x dx, but we integrated f of g of x, g prime of x dx from a to b, where a and b are some real numbers. Well, we have the same setup as before. Right, we're going to make the exact same substitution. So we let u be g of x. We differentiate u with respect to x because it is a function of x. So du over dx is the derivative of g with respect to x. And once again, multiplying across by dx, we get that du is g prime of x dx as before. So now let's start replacing. Well, the integral 
is the integral. We'll leave the bounds out for now. f of g of x, g of x is u, so that's f of u. And g prime of x dx, that's just du. So the f of u du stays the same, but here's where you have to be careful. You may ask, are the new bounds of integration the same as the original bounds of integration? And the answer is no. And you have to be careful. Since we are integrating here with respect to the variable x, implicitly this is saying x is equal to a and x is equal to b. But once you go from x to u, the new bounds of integration have to be in terms of u. So this should be u equals something and u equals something. So look at the new lower bound of integration. We're asking what is u equal to when x equals a? Well if you think of it, u equals g of x for any x. So if x equals a, then u is g of a. And of course the same goes for the new upper bound of integration. This has to be u equals something. Well if x is b and u is g of x for any x, u will be g of b. And now you have the new integral. So always be careful when you have a definite integral and you make a change of variables, you also have to find the new bounds of integration. And again, hopefully, this new integral will be simpler than the original integral. In our next videos, we will consider examples of u substitutions.